This is a block, and it should be the heaviest object in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Thanks to data miners, we know that it has an in-game weight of 50,000 units, which is 20 times heavier than the iron box and 67 times heavier than the wooden one. And yet, after spending a month researching the topic and compiling all of my data into a single YouTube video, I was shocked at the amount of people claiming I had gotten it wrong, and that the heaviest object in the game is not in fact this block, but is instead this somewhat funny, lumpy looking rock. Wait a minute, is it beeping? Uh, why is this thing beeping? This rock goes by a few names. The community likes to call it a Goma Boulder, since these rocks come from the boss fight against Marbled Goma, but its technical name in the game's files is Gloom Rock. Its weight, according to the Hyrule Engineering community, is 40,000 in-game units, which is a lot, but shouldn't be as much as the giant block that we saw earlier. However, the Gloom Boulder has one interesting ability, which sets it apart from all others. It can do this. There is no other object like this, one able to obliterate enemies in a single hit and slam down with such speed. So, understandably, Videos like this one from Roboman Redstone have convinced a decent part of the community that this rock is the heaviest in all of Hyrule. So we have one object which data miners say is heavier, and then we have another object which can obliterate enemies in a single hit. Which is heavier? Rather than brush the debate under the carpet, I decided to tackle it head on by testing which object is truly the heaviest in a series of three experiments. The results would surprise me and lead me down a rabbit trail which I did not anticipate. The first test was simple enough, a scale test. In the Gerudo Canyon, there are these massive scales which can be used for comparing the weights of giant objects. Now, old Blocky here can't fit onto those scales, so since he can't fit, we're instead going to be having a substitute known as Orby, who also weighs 50,000 units according to data mined information. We can find this orb in the Gatanasis Shrine, I believe I said that right. Anyways, since they have the same mass, they should be interchangeable in this experiment. I also attached one Zonai capsule to each object so that they could be recreated with auto build. Capsules, fun fact, are one of the very few items with a mass of one, the smallest mass in the game. So they will not impact our results. Anyways, when we compare the weight of Orby to the weight of the Gloom Boulder with these scales, we see that Orby comes out on the bottom every single time, meaning Orby weighs more than the Gloom Boulder. Although it should be mentioned that Gloom Boulders were able to weigh down the scale sometimes. It was inconsistent. Moving on, the second test was the rocket test, but we already explained how the rocket test works in a previous video with Blocky, so instead we'll be giving you a TLDR explanation. In Tears of the Kingdom, rockets can be used to launch an object into the air. Lighter objects will go higher when you do this, but heavier objects will weigh down the rockets and cause them to go a shorter distance. Make sense? Awesome, because I'm not re-explaining it. Anyways, I ended up doing this test with Blocky three times, and I found that every time I launched him into the air, he went 43 meters high. Then I did the same thing with the Gloom Boulder, and oh gosh, ooh, that, uh, mm -hmm, that's not right. The flight trajectory was totally off. We're gonna have to do this again. Okay, line it up, put the rockets on it, launch it, and or not. Okay, it's still crooked. So, fun fact, the odd shape of gloom boulders makes them uninterested in flying straight up and down, which reduces the accuracy of our numbers by uh, a significant amount. But it's no matter, since if we look at these results, the gloom boulders still went higher despite the lopsided trajectory. A lopsided trajectory should have meant that it would go a shorter distance, but since it still went further than blocky, that means it must be a lighter object, according to the rocket method at least. Huzzah for science! Jilly, jilly. And that means we can move on to the final experiment, a drop test. See, one reason a lot of people believe the gloom boulders are heavier is because they hit the ground harder. So we're just gonna drop these objects off a cliff and see which one hits the ground first. If one of them hits the ground faster, then it means it's a heavier object. Simple. It was not that simple. Using this ledge in the Gerudo Canyon, I found that Blocky hit the ground after an average of 1.50003 seconds, while falling from a height of 31 meters. Respectable. 
But when I repeated the same experiment with the gloom boulder, it only took an average of 0.7889 seconds, almost half the time. And frankly, I think that's terrifying. This means gloom boulders can go from zero to 87 miles per hour in the span of less than a second. So the point must go to the gloom boulder for being heavier in this test. Congratulations, Rocky! That's your first win! FBI, open up! Wait, no, I'm not, I'm not done explaining it yet! Give, I, I can explain everything! Please, now, give me a second chance! Okay, a few of you probably picked up on this already, but fall speed isn't exactly an accurate measurement of weight. In science, we call fall speed acceleration due to gravity. Put some quotes around that. And generally, as long as you're dealing with two objects that have a similar air resistance, then they will hit the ground at the same time. You know what? We need a demonstration. Here, I have a gorgeous rock which weighs 11 pounds. I found it in my woods. Ain't she pretty? And in the other hand, I have a golf ball which weighs less than one hundredth of that. Golf balls are surprisingly light. Yet, when I drop them from the second floor of this barn door, you'll see that they fall at the same speed and hit the ground at the same time too. So in general, weight does not impact how fast something will fall. Now, this isn't always true 100% of the time. For instance, when you're dealing with planetary bodies and huge amounts of mass, then the acceleration due to gravity will be greater since you're dealing with two objects that have an incredible amount of gravity. That huge gravity is going to pull them towards each other really fast. Drag also comes with its own funny quirks, since heavier objects can ignore drag better. But for simplicity, we're just going to say this blanket statement. Quote, usually if you drop two objects with similar air resistance at the same time, then they will hit the ground at the same time. You following me? Good, because in Tears of the Kingdom, that's not happening. I know, I know, I'm just as shocked as you are, but the culprit is acceleration due to gravity. Gloom boulders do not follow the same rules as any other object in Tears of the Kingdom. See, in real life and in Tears of the Kingdom, when you drop an object, it starts at rest and then slowly builds up velocity due to the acceleration from gravity. But gloom boulders, they don't do this. Instead, they fall at an incredible speed as soon as they're spawned in. It's a, it's a conspiracy against the public. I mean, look at this. It immediately starts falling with a huge amount of speed. And then, this is worse, this is, this is insane, gloom boulders don't accelerate. See, after I did that rinky dink fall test in the desert, I decided to try the same thing in the sky to see how fast a gloom boulder could fall before it exploded. And to my surprise, it always consistently, 100% of the time, went a speed of 40 meters per second. Every single time. No matter how long it fell, it didn't matter, it didn't speed up, it just went a consistent rate of 40 meters per second. Now, some of you might assume that this is because 40 meters per second is terminal velocity. Maybe that's the maximum speed something can go in Tears of the Kingdom. But this could not be further from the truth. Most objects go way faster. Blocky, for example, can reach a speed of almost 90 meters per second. But if you drop our gloom boulder here from the same height, it will never reach 90 meters per second. It will only ever go 40. That is, Unless you drop it first. Gloom boulders technically have two modes of existence, slam mode and normal mode. When the gloom boulder is in slam mode, it behaves weirdly and moves at this consistent 40 meters per second when you drop it down. However, if you let a gloom boulder touch the ground and then drop it from a height, it will behave the same as every other object in the game, starting at rest and going into a higher velocity with acceleration. That explains why gloom boulders will sometimes behave like this, but other times will behave like they have less weight. It's in two totally different modes. And this makes total sense given the context of why gloom boulders exist in the first place. For the boss fight, the purpose of the boulders is to trap Link in a circle of rocks, and if they go at a consistent speed and spawn right above him, then they'll be able to do their job more efficiently. And that is the mystery of the gloom boulder. An object which lacks acceleration, is going slower than it seems, and yet doesn't quite weigh as much as the largest block in Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to see more Zelda fact videos in the future, then consider subscribing because there will be more where this came from.
And special thanks to Swack, who edited this video and is in fact the only person I have ever let edit something on my channel, aside from myself. So if you'd like to see more stuff about Swack, then check out his channel here, where he does game reviews and talks about the meaning of life and other stuff. And until I see you next time, have fun storming the castle.